Grounded is an arts, wellness, and media brand that is rooted in healing through creativity and culture. Create space and time with Grounded and be inspired to lead a well-balanced life. Live your life authentically and freely with Grounded. Hello, beautiful beings. You are now tuning in to the Grounded Podcast, where we share your wellness, art, and lifestyle stories to connect and inspire. I'm your host, Bianca Yuzon Henares, and we're coming at you from EPX HQ in Taguig, Metro Manila. Dr. Leo Bernardo, known as a happiness doctor, is considered to be one of the Philippines' leading experts of personal growth and development. A healer and teacher in many ways, she utilizes the leading edge principles of psychoneurology and integrative health to guide others into their lives of happiness and wholeness. Through her workshops, retreats, and private sessions centered on well-being, forgiveness, and sacred relationships, empowered participants utilize the tools imparted on them to grow, thrive, and flourish. She is an active member of the American and International Board of Psychoneurology. Also joining us today is our grounded founder, Marika Manglapas Ledesma. Dr. Bernardo also happens to be the catalyst that set her on this transformative journey of healing and self-discovery. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me here. Oh my gosh, we're Thanks so for excited. being here. Yes. So what inspired you to cultivate awareness and understanding of the well-being of others? It worked for me. And so having searched many, many years for many, many ways to feel good and better about myself, I found that the only real way to happiness is really to love and accept yourself. And having discovered that and having implemented that in my life, I found that it's really the secret to happiness. And so I've turned it into an advocacy to teach people how, because everybody knows you need to love yourself but nobody's teaching us how, and that's what I'm doing. Much needed, yes. yes. Yeah. And Marika, can you tell us a bit about how your journey with Leah started? How did you guys meet? Yeah, well, um, I have to uh, uh, give thanks to Bubbles Bermudez because she's the one who introduced me to Leah. Um, I was going through a hard time, and I was a bit, I was curious about, healing and self-healing and self-improvement and she's like you should really talk to leah bernardo and i called her and then she answered and she's like marika we're related oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 so okay. we're cousins small but we didn't know each other we didn't know each other but we come from the same family tree so of course when you find a relative or family you know there's that instant bond so she was so great you know i i really it was one of the dark faces in my life mm -hmm. and it's the first time I learned about this concept of self-love and at that time I was really young I was an insecure girl and I a lot of I was a people pleaser I gave my power away a lot and you know she was the one who really spelled it out for me and she taught me how to love myself by doing affirmations every day she would be like I want, I'm giving you homework. You have to look in the mirror <laughs> and say, you know, tell yourself you're beautiful, even if you don't believe it, until it becomes true. And yeah, it was challenging to keep that up. And sometimes you feel really like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? You know, like looking at the mirror and trying to tell yourself. But you know what? It, now I learned like years later how true it is and how it's just the truth it's, it's a universal truth like you know there's power in your thoughts in your words and how you treat yourself so yeah that was um she really just helped me through my journey she was she was my angel that's Thank amazing you. You. and do you both still use positive affirmations daily and what yes. are some of your favorite ones you can share my ultimate favorite is i am enough and i always tell people to start from that and Amen. so, you know, everyone in this room and those who are listening, that's the first thing you need to do. Change your mirror word. We say something to ourselves every time we see ourselves in the mirror. Everybody does it. If it's positive, stay there. If it's not, change it. If you want to go deeper, go into saying, I am enough. And that one word, and again, like Marika said, whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter because you're saying it. 
And when you say it, you imprint it into your unconscious mind. Wow. And when you imprint it into your unconscious mind and you do it often enough, you will begin to believe it. And then it will be your reality or your version of truth. And how about you, Marika? Do you have a favorite one? I think it changes all the time depending on what's going through my head. Just knowing your identity through God. You know, it doesn't matter how the world sees you. And then just keep claiming that it's not about how anyone else sees you. Like letting go of what people think. Like exactly. What they think does not matter. You know, just having to remind myself those things every day. So. I think we have to learn to be careful with what follows I am. You're right, the mirror talk. Because words, words are energy. And mm-hmm. from there... Words are just, like magic. Yeah. We call it the mastermind. Because what you say becomes your thought. What you're thinking becomes your belief. Your life becomes just what you believe. So if your life is not going the way you want it to go, identify what beliefs are limiting you and change those beliefs. It's not easy. Um, But also because people will say, oh, so now you're blaming me. Not necessarily. It's more like you are the... No, there's no one to blame. It's not a blame game. No. It's just a fact. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, a very common one is people who believe and have been indoctrinated to life is about suffering, that you should mm-hmm. suffer now so that you can be happy later mm-hmm. on in the afterlife. If you have a belief that life is suffering, you're going to, of course, generate that in your life because you want your life to mean something, right? Mm-hmm. And so when we remove that belief from people, there's a huge amount of freedom that they will experience and they finally start enjoying their lives. Wow. And can you tell us a bit about what your transition was like from working in the corporate world to where you are now? And I I find that question very interesting because a lot of people, because of the work I do, they think um, I went from from being a healer to corporate life when when in fact it's the other way around. I started in corporate life Uh, My first job right out of college was um, Philippine Airlines. And I've always been in training. So with PAL, I used to do the flight attendant trainings, Um, except the trainings then were more on how to put makeup and how to sit down and how to um, (laughs) etiquette and um, customer service. And so then I moved on to several other companies, Johnson & Johnson, Unilab, always in training. And then I stopped all of that and decided to take my PhD because I wanted to go into to healing. So I had that hiatus for four and a half years while I was taking my PhD. Last year, I launched my own company called oh. Atma Prema Wellbeing Group, and we provide corporate well-being programs. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's you, also, like you also do workshops with yes. Atma Prema, right? Yes, with Atma Prema, we provide workshops and retreats and talks for corporate well-being mm-hmm. nice. i know you do you guys do your retreats and on your resort in yes tagaytay. we have them in tagaytay yeah. so you said you're there. doing it four times a year we do the private ones four times a year okay. the corporate ones are on demand because it's exclusive to corporations our retreats are highly curated and so this is why we partnered with anya because i don't just do the retreats anywhere because everything is curated from the time the surroundings yes the food Mm -hmm. the bed i love the beds there so so (laughs) you're not yeah it's not a roughing it out retreat we we can do a grounded retreat there everyone (laughs) um you mentioned one of you mentioned earlier um something about setting healthy boundaries and about not giving our power away can you give us examples on how one can set healthy boundaries okay that's a great question because the the term healthy boundaries no i want to change that okay and i want to change it to unambiguous boundaries Mm. because all boundaries are healthy oh (laughs) (laughs) i like that but we get into trouble because we feel awkward about communicating our boundaries to those we love 
And I'm telling you now, marriage is a great example of that. Because people have this mistaken idea that two become one. And you're <laughs> <laughs> that was our hashtag. That's Bianca's hashtag. Two <laughs> <laughs> become one. From the Spice Girls song. Okay, continue. <laughs> you're two separate people, yes. right? And, and you're just sharing a space. You're sharing a life. You're sharing a home. But you're two individuals. And so it's very, very important to unambiguously communicate to each other what's allowed and what's not allowed. Mm-hmm. And what you want and what you don't want. And, and boundaries are so important in relationships because later on, even when you start having children, like you guys are just starting your families, and it's very important that you teach children early on how to set their boundaries mm-hmm. so that your families can now be built on respecting each other's boundaries because that's a huge problem I have. When we do family therapy, that's a number one. Really? Yes. Okay. And boundaries. when we establish boundaries, wow, conflict is resolved almost immediately because that's the number people feel like they're intruded upon. And so boundaries are such an important topic to have in any relationship. Yeah. I'm sure that's especially important for children because they yes. us as parents into, yeah. too. Like sometimes we yes. think we own them and that we can say yes. whatever we want to them. Yes. Or, you know, just And they take that into their we're adult the years. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. What struggles have you faced in your own spiritual journey? <laughs> if you don't mind sharing. A lot. No. Okay. <laughs> As we all do. I think, well, I think bottom line is that I was always looking for magic. I was always looking for something outside of me, whether it was... Um, cards or crystals or a healing modality and at the end of the day when you actually study and explore all these healing modalities you will find that the foundation of all these healing modalities is in fact self-love wow and so no matter where you look no matter where you go you will always end up back to yourself and you need to take that journey inwards if you really want to have a life of thriving and fulfillment. And we're going to touch more on that later. Yes. I've got like a whole bunch of questions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, back to boundaries. What are the effects or like how can a person identify and recognize that they're giving their power away? Are there any specific patterns yes. or red flags to yes. look out for? Yes. Number one, you feel drained. When you feel drained and depleted, you just gave your power away. But we invented this wonderful term called energy vampires. And yeah. I don't know who invented that horrific name. Right. There are no such thing as energy vampires. Okay. Okay. Yes, there are people that are heavy. And yes, there are people that are needy. And annoying. And <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really up to you to create those boundaries. What happens is when you feel drained after being with someone, we love to blame another person. And we love to say, oh my gosh, that person sucked out all my energy. (laughs) When in fact, what I present to you is that you are such empathic beings that you come from love. And so when somebody comes to you, regardless of, you know, how heavy they are, if they have a problem and they ask you for help, because you're a loving person, you will help. Mm. But because you gave your power away, you're now depleted. But mm-hmm. how can we find the balance between, you know, drawing the line between a toxic person and help, you know, helping someone out of love? This is um, my solution to that. Help them raise their own frequency. Mm-hmm. You, you do not be the receiver of the venting. Venting is highly damaging to your unconscious. There you go. Because you are, you're getting imprinted on unconsciously, whether you like it or not. Even if you're just listening? Especially if you're just listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then you find that that person's problems become yours too. And you're just all of a sudden immersed in that person's problems also. And so what it is, is that if I go to Marika, for, for instance, and I say, I have a problem, don't say, what is the problem? Basically, you just say, okay, what can we do to solve it? Mm. 
and oh no I vent to you all the time well no that's <laughs> different that's different that's my work that's my work and if you notice like even when we're in a session together it, you just give me the general detail because I need to put myself in a position where I can direct you right. towards the resources. Yeah. Like the last time when I was telling you word for word like yeah. what this person said to me, you were just like, stop. Yes. I don't want to hear it anymore. Yes. Like, yes. It just no one can talk to you this way. Exactly. Yeah. Setting boundaries. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so you need to first say, look, I'm not, I'm here to help you. And because I love you, what is going to make you feel better go straight focus on the positive and what you can yes do and it. rather than asking why you notice when you have a problem or when you're angry let's just take for instance you're angry okay and you say i am angry I'm and then angry. you say <laughs> what's the first question you ask yourself when you're once you've established that you're angry why am exactly I angry? and what's the next what's the answer to the why it's because of someone mm. or, some or something. Blaming. Blaming something there's else blaming. Also, yeah. When there's blaming, mm. there's victimization. Uh. So you ran this wheel of, I'm angry, somebody did this to me, and that's giving up your power. Yeah. How dare they, so yeah. on and so forth. And, and you become the victim, right? So here's what you can do, and here's what I offer instead. Instead of saying, why? And don't jump into your, into your anger. And also, because that's just going to expand it, what you say is, okay, I'm angry, you acknowledge it, and then you say, what can I do to make myself feel better? So Flip what it. instead it's of what? what or how do I make myself feel better? Mm -hmm. Or what is needed here? So you direct, because when you ask yourself questions, you direct your thoughts and your brain to go towards a certain path amazing stuff yeah it's <laughs> so great and it's helpful yeah. it's helpful like you can implement it today yeah what about when you're at the receiving end what if someone's blaming you for something that you, you can't, can't do anything about that. yeah but sometimes you do feel the energy right you do energy exists, you do so and this is where you take yourself out of the equation okay um the teachings of don miguel ruiz from the four yes. agreements, the four agreements. Yes. and when and he Alex says don't to that take one. anything personally yes because yes. people will only see you're always the villain in somebody's story and that's you gotta accept that it's already. not about you it's really it, about them. yes because they're creating their own story yeah, and it goes back to you. You can't control what you other can. people think or, or what say they do or do. say or do, do. This ties into the next question. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go through a time where you yourself gave your own power away and how did you manage to heal yourself and take a step back from that toxic situation? You don't have to go into specifics. Many but times. Okay. Many, many times. And I've been in situations where I thought, oh, I'm so glad already. I, <sighs> I'm a spiritual teacher. I'm a pro. And, <laughs> and I do this for a living and I know what I'm doing and I'm... And people are falling in line to see me, and then, whoops, it happens. And it can happen. It happens especially, well, falling in love will do that to you. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Another thing that will do that to you is work. Sometimes you alter who you are to get that job or to get that account. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, so the thing is, catch yourself. I, I, what I want to get out there is that self-love doesn't mean you're never going to be sad again or you're never going to make a mistake again or you're never going to get angry again and that's next to impossible because you're a human being and you will get angry you will get sad because that's our nature but an emotionally mature person will say I'm angry how do I change this oops, I think I'm giving up my power because I don't feel good about this. Okay, how do I change this? Um, or, okay, now I'm wearing a mask because I'm so invested in this person liking me. You catch yourself mm -hmm. without judgment. Totally right. without judgment. You don't ever say, oh, what's wrong with me? Because a lot of us feel that we need to go inwards to fix ourselves. When, in fact, I'm inviting you now to come from the foundation that there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. That there's nothing to fix and that your only obligation to yourself is to like who you are. 
Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> so much to unpack there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the local wellness and healing community, what's yes. your take on the current situation and do you feel like it's evolved from the days Absolutely. you started out? Absolutely. Okay. I, uh, what I love is that, you know, I saw a billboard in, when I was in a car and it said, love yourself. And as I was about to take a picture of it, of course, it, it changed. It was one of those electronic billboards. And I said, wow, we've come a long way. That it's safe for people to say, love yourself now so publicly. When I first started talking about self-love five, six years ago, people were like, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so yeah, it, it's, I think the wellness industry or the well-being industry has in fact gotten the respect it deserves. If you look at Reiki, for instance, which is um, a form of energy healing, mm -hmm. when we first started doing Reiki about 15, 16 years ago, people were thinking it was voodoo. Mm -hmm. And and now it's so widely accepted. And right. I think it's the most widely There's actually accepted. a science to all these things. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Can you tell us in your own words what psychoneurology is and how did you come to discover it? Psychoneurology is the alternative to psychiatry and psychology. So it's a completely different therapy method. In psychology, you do a lot of tracing back to your childhood. Um, in psychoneurology, we focus on solutions as opposed to the origin of the issues. So we don't really go into a lot of storytelling mm -hmm. in psychoneurology. Psychoneurology also integrates ancient wisdom, ancient spiritual practices with our newest understanding of um, the unconscious mind and how it works. So it's, I describe it as a marriage between science and spirituality. What I love about psychoneurology is that it's spiritual based. So it's based on uh, a lot of ancient practices like Qigong, we do um, the Kabbalah, uh, we have a practice called the Yoga of Abraham. So it's, it's an integration of the many different spiritual practices that have been around from time immemorial. And then we use a lot of languaging, inductions, um, and the introduction of new resources changing perspectives so that people can now utilize these tools and integrate it into their lives. Mm -hmm. I teach my patient new resources, new ways of thinking, um, or if they're coming in with an issue, I give them a different perspective on, on and it's that perspective that supports you rather than brings you down. So it changed my life. Um, the growth that I've had from it has been quite exponential, and it's we're helping a lot of people through it. How has psychoneurology changed the way you approach your craft? Psychoneurology is a lot like we call it um, a therapy method because it's it's in a therapy format, but I like calling it the lifestyle okay. because it's body, mind, spirit. It's thriving in body, mind, and spirit. And so it has to do with what you're eating, how you're moving, what you're learning, how you're integrating that into your daily life so that you can create. Bottom line is you, it's you creating your own life. Okay. And it's you creating your heaven on earth. And wow. so that's ex um, so it is very different from what I used to do before because it's a completely different it's it's not even related the only thing that was the same was that i was teaching mm. because the topic is completely different right yeah can i just ask just for our listeners uh, psychoneurology it's because you mentioned ancient practices like kabbalah mm -hmm. and but it's not a religion absolutely not okay um it's uh it's a combination of practices that have um, been handed, been passed down from generation to generation. Like Qigong, for instance. Right. Um, Qigong is the precursor of all martial arts, but they've also scientifically found, and there's a lot of research going into it now, we're in the alteration of the flow of energy and 
focusing on your energy flow in your energy meridians brings about health. Yeah. So it's more on taking charge, you taking charge you're of taking your own life. taking charge of your own life. You, you editing what mm. goes into your space and what doesn't go into your space. And we summarize that by calling it vibrational hygiene. Oh, such a nice great. term. <laughs> I love that term too. Because every day you decide what you're going to entertain, what you're going to focus on, the people you want to be around, what you're eating, what you're thinking. How much you love yourself. How much mm. you love yourself, how you're meditating. Meditation or, is or a huge the, part the of The things that are said to you, are you going to agree with it or not? Are you going to accept it are or not? Are you going to accept yes. it or not? Mm. Yes, yes, absolutely. What do you, your own definition, what to you is self-love? Self-love is how you treat yourself, your relationship with yourself, your inner dialogue with yourself, how much of you do you accept, how much of you are you treasuring, how much of you are you honoring. And, and really, self-love is your relationship with yourself. Can I just add, um, do you also believe that you know God lives within all of us? Absolutely. So having a relationship with yourself is equivalent to having a relationship yes. with God. Yes. And this is why I invite people to, to again, visualize that God is within you. Right. Rather than outside mm -hmm. of you. Because when you're visualizing that God is within you, you will never treat yourself unkindly again. Right. Yeah. It's even in the Bible, sorry, like in Christianity, that's what they teach you, that yes. Jesus lives, lives within, within us. You. Within you. And you're, you're really the personification of the divine. Right. And so you are divinity in human form. And so let's stop treating ourselves like we're our own worst enemy. There's this cliche that, oh, the only enemy is within. Oh, stop saying that, please. Because you need to be your own best friend, not your own worst critic. Why do you think there's a common misconception of self-love is selfish and why do you think Thank it's so you for asking yeah, that it's widespread and everyone yeah. says that when you're coming from self-love or when you're so full okay when you love what ruins not let's rewind that what ruins all relationships it's expectations right that's when all the problems arise when your expectations are not met so everybody says the best way to have a relationship is without expectations. Have you tried that? It yeah. doesn't work. Okay. Okay. And so the best way to approach this is fill your own cup so that when you give to somebody you love, you're giving the excess. It's the only way to not expect anything in return. Mm -hmm. And when you are in a relationship, let's just, I, I like, talking about romantic relationships because every time I talk about romantic relationships, people listen. <laughs> it's and a great example. Yes, it is. And so when you are in a romantic relationship and your cup is filled, you release that person from the obligation to make you happy. And it all goes back to, you know, it's all within you. you it's can't all within you. You can't joy that, in someone else. Exactly. They can help. They can complement it and add to your joy. But you don't expect them to fill your cup no. up because no. you've already done that yourself. Yes, because that's when relationships go crazy. It's when you expect the other person to make you happy. You expect the other person to fill that void. And it's never going to happen because um, you're the only one that can fill that void. And so self-love is the most unselfish of all because when you take care of yourself, you're now able to give freely without expectation. And that's what an ideal relationship ought to be because when you're, people like to glamorize um, relationships as give and take, give and take, when, when in fact you're really giving most of the time. And the only time you can actually receive, you can't receive what you don't have. So for you to be able to treasure what you're receiving, you have to recognize it first. So the only way you can truly receive another person's love 
is if you have it already. Otherwise, we, we do this thing like taking our partners for granted. And that's what happens when we take our partners for granted. So if your cup is full and you are overflowing and you are super yes. in that great mindset, then now you can... You can actually do community service. You can actually work even when you're working. What's the most important thing in a work environment? Productivity, output. What is the number one soft skill that influences output? Happiness, mm. wellness. When your people are coming from emotional maturity, physical well-being, and that they're taken care of, they feel taken care of, output is just a natural occurrence. You don't have to demand it. Productivity goes up. When I go to offices, what's the biggest problem? It's burnout. Mm. It's burnout and it's emotional immaturity. And when you take care of yourself, it's, it's the burnout cure too. What's a safe place to start learning about how to truly w love oneself in an unconditional way? Like, where does one begin, especially? You just start. Okay. You just <laughs> start. What, you just and you just say, what can I like about myself today? That's and start a, start a journal. Yeah. Start a journal. And mm -hmm. don't go to 30 minutes before you sleep. That's the most crucial time when you're doing unconscious work because you're being imprinted on for the next eight hours. Wow. And so 30 minutes before you sleep, that's when you do your meditation. That's when you do your gratitude. And the most important thing you should be doing is what do I like about myself today? Ooh. Why? Because when we're lying down, what are you saying? I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't huh. have done that. Right. I should have, you know. Or we distract ourselves with our phones. Yes. Uh, we're not... And looking and deep in, inside ourselves yourself. give yourself the greatest human need which is validation which and it can only come from yourself yes because if you are in a romantic relationship with someone and they're validating you we say oh that's not true i know i don't believe yeah. you know, you're only saying, just that. saying that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay yep. because you can't accept it because you're not believing it within does self-love cover dealing with old wounds from the past how do you approach that or do you just like not think about the past and think about the now exactly name me a human being without a painful past Ugh. <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm trying to think right no so we get so caught up in telling our stories of our past and remember when we do this we're always the victim okay with self-love, you tell your story, but you're always the victor. Because when you're loving yourself, you, now, you can now begin to look at your past and see everything as a blessing. And see every, see every painful moment, because pain is part of humanity. But you transcend that pain because, no, sorry. Pain is part of humanity, but suffering and sacrifice is not and so when you're coming from self-love you see the pain and then you see it as blessings as how it helped you become who you are now so in psychoneurology we work on your now and where you want to go the past is last because when you're coming from love now and where you're getting to where you want to go you now are able to view your past as a blessing mm. rather than a story of tragedy and, and, and victimization. Okay, and use your experiences as more of like a stepping stone. Yeah. And you can say, okay, I may have felt abused, I, might, I may have experienced abuse in, in the past. And you just say it matter of factly because now you know that I'm never gonna go there and now I'm teaching women how to stand up for themselves. That's mm. one way you would now make yourself the hero of your own story. Mm -hmm. um, some people will say, oh, I was abandoned in the past and I, you know, now I don't trust people. And that's an unhealed part of you. Yeah. Whereas if you're loving yourself, you can say, I was abandoned in the past and now I make sure that when I'm with people I love, I reassure them that I'm committed to them. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
So it's, it's a very different story you're telling when you're coming from self-love. You know, when you tell your stories you're, and when, they're, when you're honest and truthful about your struggles, your challenges and hardships, you really don't know who you can help. So rather than being a victim of your hardships, when you tell your story and help others, I think that's a good way of healing wounds from the past. Yes. We live in a fast-paced world and stress has become a normal part of everyday life, especially for city dwellers. Many studies now indicate that stress is a major factor of chronic illness. Can you give us any advice on how to deal with stress? From Stress is indeed the largest cause of, uh, the largest factor for chronic illness. And um, in this is, again, the answer is always the same. It's take care of yourself first. What we do is we beat ourselves up. I have to do this by today. Yes, yes, I, it, it, yes. And set it up so you can win. And chunk it down. You need to chunk it down. When you're looking at what you need to do, don't focus on the end. Focus on the next step. Why? Because when you focus on the next step, when you've accomplished that, the brain feels like it, there's a sense of accomplishment. Mm. It doesn't say, oh my God, I still have this far to go. Celebrate your wins. So you have to psych yourself to celebrate your wins so that you're always winning. You're always accomplishing something. You're always, yay, I did this today. There's always something to celebrate. Mm -hmm. There's always something to celebrate. And when you set your daily goals, I believe in daily goals. I mean, set your long-term goals and then forget about it. Focus on your daily goals and make sure that your daily goals are doable. Because mm. then there's <laughs> so many people that set daily goals for like 25 items. Oh my gosh, yeah. And then they feel bad about themselves for not yeah. getting it done. So you're when setting yourself up for failure. You're setting, set yourself, set yeah. the game up so that you win. Speaking of winning and losing and learning, what challenges have you faced in this career and can you share with us <laughs> the most challenging what the most challenging part of your practice is is it like people who won't listen or um yes it's people who feel that healing needs to be done to them mm. and all healing is self-healing people need to understand that that as a therapist i'm here to guide you i'm here to direct you i'm not the one healing you you are the one healing yourself so you need to put in the effort you need to put in, like, um, a lot of my patients get angry at me when they have to look in the mirror and say that they like themselves, and they're like, get ang they, they really lash out at me. They're like, why do I have to do this? This is ridiculous. Or... But those that, you know, and I say, you know, if you're angry at me, it's okay, just do it anyway. And now I tell them, because then they get guilty for getting angry at me, <laughs> and then, you know, or they just don't show up for their next appointment. Okay. And so I just tell them straight that when you're, when you're feeling angry, just try to go through that. And you need to really, because we've been running wheels that our behavior is patterned. So I compare them to wheels. And when you, you've been running wheels and patterns that don't support you, it takes time for this hamster on this wheel to, to jump from this wheel to the healthy wheel. How did your family and friends react when you started writing about self-love uh, years ago? Was it a new concept at the time? And did they call you and were they like, what is this? Actually, of course, you will always have snide comments from people and people will always be out there to criticize you. I'm lucky enough that my fam I've edited my life so well that my friends are people who support me. I, I really do not engage with people who, who don't. It's not worth my time. Um, and so my family has always been supportive of this. So it was it was easy. Plus, I write for the Enquirer, and I've been writing for the Enquirer since I was 21. And so making the transition, it, it was easy because um, um, the editor is also my friend. And so I'm lucky enough that I have a, well, I've set it up that way where I have a, a, a safe environment to just be me. You surrounded yourself with the right people, the good ones. <laughs> so we we really are the master of our fate yeah. and the captain of our soul. Yes, absolutely. 
As we were browsing your website, we came across the term microcurrent acupuncture. <laughs> how does this differ from regular acupuncture and how do you integrate it into sessions with your patients? Um, that I refer to as body work because acupuncture we use for, so that the chi runs smoothly and flowingly around your body. Microcurrent acupuncture is a machine that uses electricity as opposed to needles. A session is 20, 30 minutes as opposed to a two hour acupuncture session. Yeah, so it cool. puts your body back into homeostasis, which is the balance, which is the harmony. Mm -hmm. And um, so I love it because uh, it gets rid of a backache in five minutes without any meds. Mm -hmm. What's your take on the law of attraction and how do you integrate it into your own life? You know, what we focus on, we attract to ourselves. I'm a firm believer in that, and that's why I really advise people to take care of their side of the fence, because the universe will always mirror your frequency, your vibration, what's going. The universe does not understand desire. The universe speaks in energy and vibration. So the way the law of attraction works is like attracts like. And so when you're trying to attract something into your life, you need to match that vibration art, that vibrationary frequency. And so the law of attraction is all about vibration. And so when we talk about vibrational hygiene, we're really using the law of attraction. And the strongest vibration, of course, it's love. If you were to translate that to a quality, it would be authenticity where you come from your true self, your true being. And that's when you can manifest immediately. And that's why my formula for self-love is move, learn, grow, create. So you have to be a vibrational match to that thing or situation that you're trying to attract to yourself. And that's where you do the work. That's where the work comes in, making sure you know you're... Yes, and you need to have beliefs that support it. Okay. Okay. Because if you believe it's not possible, you can manifest it all you want. It's not going to happen. Or you believe you're manifesting, but you don't really believe that you're, it's worth, you're worthy of it or that you deserve it, it also won't happen. Or it could go away. If you're not getting what you want, um, you, are, you have a belief that is stopping it somewhere in yes, there because there there are no limits to your dreams or you're probably not um, voicing it out specifically enough oh so you have to be extremely specific. specific how do we tend to our vibrational fields and manage our thoughts do you have any tips like steps or every day do more of what feels good to you when you are feeling good your vibrational frequency is high and keep it real Yes. Stop Always. doing things that you think you're. Stop doing things because that's what you think people will like or that's acceptable. Just be you. Yeah, that's challenging in today's world. Yeah, but yeah. But Such if, as, yeah. you know, there's always going to be yeah. somebody who doesn't like you. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And we that has nothing everyone. to do with you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you might as well do you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our beliefs instilled in us growing up, like what parents say, teachers say, play such a big role on how we take on life, right? How do we break through these limitations or barriers that have been set up, especially after we've accepted them as reality for so long? And you know, they mean well. Sometimes parents or teachers will say, I don't know, give me an example. They'll say something like, You need to work really, really hard or else you won't. Yeah, or you're always behind. Or I don't well, know. Why can't you be more like this person? Your classmate, right? How do you break through that? That's when that's we call that belief work, where we change beliefs. Belief work. Yes, we we change we spot limiting beliefs, and change it change it into beliefs that support you. Oh, so you identify them. Oh. Identify them, and there's a way to do it. Oftentimes, I feel like people walk around they don't even know they're carrying these beliefs. Which is why awareness is so important. Is there a specific type of meditation or practice you recommend that people do every day? Like how, or does it depend on how much people can integrate into their schedule? No, make time for meditation. Okay. It's, it's not how much time you create the time for meditation. It needs to be created. It has, it has to, to be a priority. priority. I, would, I would think so. 
because it's really impossible to do this without stillness. In psychoneurology, we define happiness as the amount of time you can spend with yourself in stillness. That's and so another beautiful. definition we have of happiness is excitement about the future. Mm. And so you need to be able to spend time with the most important person in your life, and that's you. And like that stillness, enjoy that stillness, and not feel like there's something wrong with you because you're alone. If you cannot sit still in the presence of your own company, you are not loving yourself. You know, you talk a lot about wisdom, intuition. How Can you tell us a little bit more about using intuition as your guide or use, or intuition being equivalent to wisdom? Beautiful question because I'm a firm believer that you are your own guru. Nobody can tell you what to think. Nobody can tell you what to do. And there is no person outside of you that should tell you how you live your life. And intuition, again, I like to call it the voice of God. It, it's the voice of the divine inside of you. And when you listen to your own inner compass, and that's your intuition, your intuition is never wrong. It just, it, people just question it a lot. And this is why we ask you to meditate. This is why we ask you to go deep within so that your inner voice can be loud and clear and highly directive because that's your inner guru and you need to be your own inner guru, your own guru. And so wisdom is exactly that. It, it's, it's coming from your inner space. It's, it's coming from your gut, your heart, and your mind all rolled into one. That's wisdom. Intelligence, wisdom trumps intelligence anytime. And wisdom is, is really based on intuition and divine uh, direction. So it's also like listening to your heart because you can be told something in school or in church or at a seminar or at work. Feel it right doesn't resonate. Or in throw your it heart. away. Don't even judge it anymore. Don't even say, "Oh, they're wrong." Or there's a don't okay. don't even put energy into it. Just okay. if it you hear something that doesn't resonate with you, just say, "Not for me." Mm. And if it's for you. Like listening if it's for to you, this then podcast. You, will, you will think about it. You will, exactly. It, we, you yeah. will, it will come back to you. And exactly. you can be like, why, why am I still yes. thinking about this? Maybe I need mm -hmm. to reassess how I feel about this yes. Like idea. everything you heard here today, yeah. take in what works for you, throw mm -hmm. away what doesn't. Right. I like that. Like that. Yeah. Not for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Simply. Because everyone that's talking is just as human as you too. Right. So we all and come learning. with beliefs. We all come with with a certain limited perception of something or another yes. and evolving as we go along mm -hmm. okay time for a fun question <laughs> not that those weren't fun but so if you were president or queen of the whole wide world and you could require everyone to do one thing daily that would change their lives what would it be meditation every day 10 minutes every okay. morning and 10 minutes before sleeping do you have any upcoming projects or workshops you'd like to share with our audience? Yes, I'd like to invite them to Racing Frequencies. Racing Frequencies is a group. It's a community that's open to everyone. I run it every first Thursday of the month. Um, it's the very basic because it's, it's an hour and a half. I give a life lesson, so it changes each month. Um, this coming... In September, we're doing one on unambiguous boundaries. Um, so last uh, last month, we spoke about anxiety. And so it changes each month. And I, it's a way for my patients uh, to top up or people that have come to our retreats or our workshops. It's also designed for people who are curious to come and see what we're all about. And um, so I run that every first Thursday of the month. It's in Rockwell. Um, if they uh, want more information, they can just get in touch with me through my website. 
and then we will add them on to our our group and we we announce that also on instagram we announce it got it every thursday then and last but not the least how do you stay grounded mm. that's an excellent question because in staying grounded i do really make an effort to do so and i walk barefoot a lot and that's a number one way for me to get grounded because I meditate a lot, so I tend to be um, a little bit flighty. And so <laughs> I, I really do make it a point to stay connected to the earth and, and walking barefoot is a great way for me to ground. I also swim mm -hmm. a lot. So it's it's staying staying close to the earth and staying solid into the earth is, is so important. I hug trees. <laughs> oh, we love doing that too. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, and when I'm in Baguio, we do this thing called forest bathing, where where we walk in the forest. Um, no, there's a that. trail. Um, I should take you on that. Yeah. yeah. And there's a trail that we go to, and it it's beautiful. So I do make it a point to get stay grounded. Can you? Is there such a thing as meditating too much? No. 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 Okay. No. No. <laughs> you can never OD on meditation. Okay. You can't. You can't. Okay. I'm just a little bit spaced out more than more than the normal person. <laughs> okay. But um, and uh, so staying grounded is is very, uh, very important to me. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, Leah. With us. Thank you for your time, yeah. and we look forward to your future workshops and possible collaborations. Yes. yes, definitely. Thank you for having me. Yeah.